Hello everyone, I'm Rory. I'm product manager for Mari here at Foundry. In this video, I'm going to show you all the UI changes we made going from Mari 3 to Mari 4. Hopefully after watching this video, you'll be able to adapt various workflows that feature in Mari 3 learning materials across into Mari 4. Let's start off with a new project dialog. In Mari 3.3, when you open the new project dialog, you get the object controls, the channel presets, and the color space settings all combined in this one view. If I select an Alembic file here, you'll see the mesh options have barely any space to actually show the options. The channel presets are completely compressed down, the whole thing is just really cluttered to be in one vertical screen height. If I jump across to Mari 4 now and open the new project dialog, you'll see these three categories now have a tab to themselves. Selecting an object, we have the mesh options with far more space to breathe. Channel presets are all here, and the color settings in the third tab. We've also added a lighting tab. Here you can set an environment map, active light count, as well as the initial shading and lighting mode when the project starts. Now on creating channel presets in Mari 4, an associated shader shall be created alongside your initial channels. Mari will also connect your initial channels to the associated shader inputs. This allows you to get painting right away, without any additional steps that would be required when working in Mari 3. I'm now going to switch over to this project that I have open in both Mari 3 and 4 to better demo the changes we've made in the Mari interface. In Mari 3 we had toolbars that controlled the current modes for selection, lighting and mirroring, as well as a toolbar to switch your canvas to use a system shader. In Mari 4 we've combined these toolbars together to form our new Projects Control toolbar. Click and hold over one of these controls to change the current mode. You can also use control and click to cycle through each mode. In the lighting toolbar in Mari 3, we had a separate control for toggling shadows. In Mari 4, we've instead introduced two additional lighting modes, basic lighting with shadows and full lighting with shadows. In Mari 4, we've introduced the concept of a current user shader. Selecting this option in the current shader control will switch the project to the last selected user shader. In this case, it's the principal BRDF, which is new to Mari 4. Additionally, Mari now saves the lighting mode used alongside certain shaders. User shader and current paint target have their own remembered lighting modes, while the current channel, current layer, and current layer and below system shaders share a remembered lighting mode. This means you can cycle through the various shader modes and the lighting will switch to your preferred mode for each component. In Mari 3, all of its tools are available in this toolbar on the left hand side of the interface. Depending on the vertical height of your desktop resolution, some of the tools and color controls may only be accessible by clicking the double arrow icon at the bottom of the toolbar to reveal the remaining buttons. In Mari 4, besides the eyedropper and current color controls, all of Mari's tools are now grouped into categories to reduce the space to take in the UI. You can switch to the current tool of each group by clicking the group's button. To change the active tool of a particular group, click and hold the group button and select the desired tool from the submenu that pops up. Like the Project Controls toolbar, you can also use the control click method to cycle through the other tools in the group. And of course, you can also use keyboard shortcuts to switch to any tool in Mari. Mari's tools are arranged in the following groups. The object tools, which has select and transform selected objects. The painting tools, which has the paint, blur, eraser, and vector paint. The image painting tools, with paint through, gradient, and clone stamp. And the paint transformation tools, which include the warp, slurp, pinup, and toe brush. And finally, the paint buffer tools, with the marquee select, transform paint buffer, zoom paint buffer, and vector inspector. For each tool in Mari, its properties, options, and actions appear in the Tool Properties toolbar at the top of the interface. There is limited horizontal space for the amount of controls that appear here. On some tools, you have to click the double arrow button on the right hand side to reveal the rest of the controls. In Mari 4, we went through all the tool properties and started to declutter and contract long labels where we could. We removed all the tool labels on the left hand side and instead used the tools icon to better indicate which tool is active. In the Paint Through tool, we changed the Paint Through Image Clone drop-down menu for a simple checkbox. Additionally, to improve visibility in your current brush, we added a brush thumbnail to all the tools in Mari that paint. The Marquee Select Tool Properties toolbar has seen a complete redesign in Mari 4. The lasso mode has been condensed into a single group. You can cycle through these with a control click or click hold the button to get a drop-down menu. We also replaced all the labeled buttons with more visual icon-only buttons. This is also where you'll find our new Paint Buffer Fill action. Clicking this will fill your current marquee selection with your foreground colour. Filling the paint buffer like this can also be accomplished by dragging and dropping any colour swatch into the canvas while the marquee select tool is active. 
Mari has a large number of blending modes, and in Mari 3, no matter whether you were adjusting the blending control of the paint buffer, or a layer, this list would span across most of your desktop. This made it difficult to find your desired blend mode. So in Mari 4, we collapsed this list into a hierarchy of groups, making the list easier to navigate and choose the right blending mode. In Mari 3, we have this painting toolbar with a solitary button for clearing the paint buffer. In Mari 4, we've renamed this toolbar as the Paint Buffer Toolbar, and is now located below the Project Controls toolbar on the left-hand side of the interface. An additional button for resetting the translation of the paint buffer has also been added here. In Mari 3, we have the PTEX and Vector Painting toolbars in the default layout. In Mari 4, both the PTEX and Vector Painting toolbars have been hidden in the default layout. They can both still be made visible through the bottom half of the toolbar right-click menu. In Mari 3, the heads-up display draws in the top left of the canvas. It takes up a lot of space and obscures the paint subject, the tool help being the worst defender as it got completely in the way of your painting experience. In Mari 4, we've taken a cue from Modo and matched their style of heads-up display on the bottom right. And to make sure the tool help wouldn't get in the way anymore, we've moved it to the status bar. In Mari 3, it isn't easy for new users to find all the control panels, or palettes. A list of all the palettes is hidden behind nested menus and a non-intuitive right-click menu. So in Mari 4, you can now get access to all of Mari's power through the new Palettes toolbar that we've introduced to the right-hand side of the interface. The Palettes toolbar allows you to work without any palettes being docked in the interface. You can click the buttons to open palettes temporarily to make quick changes, or switch the toolbar to Pinned mode at the top to open the palettes persistently. A second click on the floating palettes button will close it. Palettes can still be docked and stacked into the interface. Already open palettes that are floating or docked display in the toolbar with a darker background. If a palette you want to work on is in a dock stack or not visible, clicking this button on the toolbar will bring it to the top of the stack. If the palette is minimized, a click of this button will maximize it. An additional click will minimize it again. This works really well with the no graph and no properties palette being docked along the bottom of the interface. And if the Palettes toolbar is taking up too much of your workspace, you can toggle off the labels with this double arrow button at the top of the toolbar. In Mari 3, we have two palettes for adjusting the painting and projection settings. In our mission to reduce clutter in Mari 4, we merged the projection settings into the painting palette. All the projection controls can now be found under the projection settings control group. Another example of clutter in Mari 3 is the brush editor. All the brush properties laid out here can also be found in the tool properties palette. Additionally, the shelves and presets tabs are just copies of the shelf palette. So in Mari 4, we removed the brush editor completely. Now you can edit your brush settings and tool properties. We moved the scratch pad here as well. Now to create custom brushes, click and drag the new brush thumbnail from any painting tools properties toolbar and drop it into your shelf for later use. The colors palette in Mari 3 had room for improvement as it duplicates controls for setting the foreground and background colors, controls that already exist in the tools toolbar, as well as the sliders and picker controls being at a fixed size, preventing finer color picking control. So in Mari 4, we've completely refreshed the palette. To start with, we removed the foreground and background duplicate controls and made the palette resizable, allowing you to get larger sliders and picker controls. We've also made our sliders show a preview of what the color shall be at each point along the slider when adjusted. We've added R, G, and B picker modes, as well as adding the picker color history on the side. We've introduced a new control to display the color values in the ranges of float, half, and byte data, allowing you to specify exact color values in these depth ranges. And borrowing from Nuke, you can now adjust numerical values with your keyboard or mouse at any decimal point, allowing you to get total precision in your chosen colors. This decimal point control is available across all of Mari 4's numerical controls, including all the procedural properties. In Mari 3, we had a separate palette for the pixel analyzer. To reduce clutter, we made the analyzer a tab within the colors palette. We've also made improvements to the gray and blend picker controls. In Mari 3, the gray control was made up of a ramp and preset swatches. In Mari 4, we've made all these elements a single resizable control. In Mari 3, the blend picker was again size constrained and had four additional blend point color controls on the outside of the blend picker. In Mari 4, we once again made the picker resizable, as well as incorporating the four blend point controls into the main picker. Now to set the blend point colors, drag and drop a color swatch onto the top of each quadrant of the blend picker control. In Mari 3, we had different looking controls for picking colors. We had the colors palette, the pop-up color picker, and the J key quick palette for picking colors. 
all three had relatively different designs. So in Mari 4, we took steps to ensure that the Colors palette, Pop-Up Color Picker, and J-Key Quick palette all had similar design to them. Since the introduction of Color Space in Mari 3, Mari has had the Legacy Color Manager palette existing alongside the OCIO controlled color settings found in the project settings. In Mari 4, we have removed the Legacy Color Manager palette to prevent confusion caused from having multiple methods of controlling color in Mari. However, it can still be re-enabled with an environment variable. We also took this opportunity to extend the project settings window. It now contains a description text box as well as project information which can be seen in tooltips in the projects tab. In Mari 3, we introduced the node graph. However, it came with two modes. A basic mode would only allow you to work on graph layers, while switching to the advanced mode would allow you to work on the object's root graph network. In Mari 4, we have removed basic mode, and the root graph network is available by default. This also means that Mari non-commercial users will have full access to Mari's node networks for the first time. We thought the node properties palette in Mari 3 was a bit cluttered. All the property groups were stacked, so when opened would require a little scrolling to navigate. Additionally, nodes had a label for the node name and a name text control directly below it with the same data. So in Mari 4's node properties, we combined the node's label and name editor into a single control along the top. The node property groups are also now laid out in tabs, reducing the amount of scrolling required to navigate them. In Mari 3, you can fill your selected patches or faces with a colour from the Fill sub-menu under the Patches menu. You couldn't however fill the entire object with colour. So in Mari 4 we've extended this fill mechanism to work with patches, faces and objects. We moved the fill actions out of the Patch menu and put it under the more appropriate Selection menu as this now worked across any selection type. We also hooked this fill mechanism up to a colour swatch drop action. Now you can pick selection groups and drop colours into the canvas to fill all your face selections without needing to navigate through nested menus. We've looked into improving group layer workflows. In Mari 3, clicking the group button in the layers toolbar adds an empty group above the currently selected layer. To group layers, you have to use the right click menu. You also can't add a layer to an empty group, as Mari always inserts new layers above the selected group, requiring you to reparent the new layers yourself. In Mari 4, we made the group button perform the more commonly required group layers action. Now when you have a group selected and expanded, adding a new layer will insert it at the top of the selected group's layer stack. However, if the group is collapsed, the new layers will be added above the group layer. And new to Mari 4, we've added an ungroup action, so you can now ungroup multiple group layers at once. In Mari 3, the I key quick palette for current selection didn't allow you to specify the paint target if your layer had a mask. So in Mari 4, we added a column so you can pick either the layer or mask as your current paint target. In Mari 3, editing curves was restricted to the small control with a fixed size. We heard your requests for a better curve editor, so in Mari 4, we've built you a new one. Throughout Mari, curve properties are now displayed with the grayscale ramp representation of your curve data, and when you click the button to the right of it, you get the new curve editor pop-up. You can resize this control to get as much precision as you need. Click and drag existing points to edit their position, or click on the graph and create new points. Double clicking points will give you the option to set the x y values, and shift clicking multiple points will allow you to manipulate them together. You can delete points to the right click menu, and replace the graph with presets. We really hope working with our new curve editor gets you the precision you need. In Mari 3 you had limited control when subdividing your objects. In Mari 4 we've updated to OpenSubdiv 3.1, which comes with new features and methods that enable you to fully control the subdivision of your models. Depending on the source object format, the subdivide menu will give you different options. A lemming file can store OpenSubdiv attributes which can be read or ignored by Mari using the use source and for subdivision controls. OBJ and FBX files don't support these attributes, and shall therefore always assume force subdivision. OpenSubdiv 3.1 also comes with a new option to snap to the limit surface, which can be enabled with this control here. We've also added a subdivide button to the properties portion of the object's palette, so you no longer have to navigate through the object's menu. Some of you told us that you'd like to have more controls in Mari's source grade feature. So in Mari 4, we extended the source grade feature to match the controls available in our grade adjustment layer. In Mari 3, some of our more technical preferences were poorly labelled and caused confusion. We revisited the GPU preferences in Mari 4, we recategorized depth projection to shadow maps, and added a shaders group to better categorize some of the preferences found in general. Those are just some of the changes we made, and hope that the preferences become less of a mystery to you. And finally, exporting channels in Mari 3 was a lot of hard work. There was no easy way to batch export multiple channels, and when exporting all your channels, you'd have to click through far too many pop-up menus. 
So in Mari 4, we've introduced the Export Manager. You can access the Export Manager from the Project Toolbar, as well as the Channels menu and Channels and No Graph Palette right-click menus. Mari 4 has introduced Export Items. These are entities that describe the export target and options for a source channel or bay point node, and are saved with your project. The Export Manager is a new dialog where you can manage all of your project's export items. Every new channel created now automatically adds a new export item to the project for itself. Each row represents a single export item, and the columns represent the various export item properties. You can either edit these cells one by one, or in batches using pop-up dialogs accessible from a right-click menu. Each export item displays the target file name, file options, size, depth, and color space. The target size, depth, and color space can be locally overridden in the export manager without changing the source channel or bake point node's properties. Export items have a field for a post-process command. This field specifies what command line should be executed after exporting the channel or bake point to file. This can be used to move or backup files as well as triggering third-party render engine texture conversion tools, speeding up your workflows with programs like Maya and Katana. Export overrides allow you to globally override each item's property temporarily without changing the value set in each export item. This is also where you can specify whether to only export your currently selected patches or all patches available in each object. You can also add additional items for the same source. This is very handy if, for example, you want to create a proxy version of your channel at a lower resolution and bit depth. You can uncheck items, giving you complete control on which items get exported, or only export your currently selected items using the option in the right-click menu. We really think the Export Manager is going to transform how you get your textures down the pipeline. So those are all the changes made from Mari 3 to Mari 4. Mari 4 is the first step in the next generation of Mari. We're excited about it and hope you will be too. This has been Rory from Foundry's Mari team, thanks for watching.